the casting of nets by the river, a tableau almost as old as time. The Chinese emphasize harmony between nature and humanity. For ordinary people, enjoying nature's bounty is the most direct expression of this philosophy. The Yangtze River, with its rich aquatic resources, has shaped our tastes over thousands of years. In almost every restaurant along the Yangtze, chefs busy themselves preparing signature dishes of river fish. But these delicious ingredients are not inexhaustible. The Yangtze's biological integrity index once fell to the lowest level, no fish. No great river should face such a fate. What secrets of life can be found in just a cup of Yangtze River water? Researchers are using environmental DNA technology to investigate the river's biodiversity. Studying underwater life has always been a challenging task. Yet, this complex information can now be encoded through the simplest medium. eDNA technology can quickly read the data contained in water samples, providing an innovative way to perceive the environment. By using this technology, we can better understand the challenges confronting the Yangtze and uncover potential risks. The Yangtze River's average annual discharge into the sea is about 960 billion cubic meters. Along the way, its water interacts with the air, soil, plants, animals, and human civilization. Each drop has the power to nurture life. Yet, they also appear like the tears of a potentially depleting river. The vast daunting lake stretches as far as the eye can see. But beneath its calm and graceful surface lies an intricate web of nets created by poachers. Finding these nets among the reeds is not easy. After much searching, a Deming and his colleagues finally make a discovery. They've uncovered a catch net, an illegal fishing device. Get so. 
This net can capture even small fish just about two centimeters long in one sweep. Once submerged, it sinks deeper and deeper, forming a straight line when towed by a boat, sweeping through the water like a broom. Illegal fishing practices are the focus of the patrols conducted by Her Deming and his colleagues in the East Daunting Ecological Protection Association. These poaching methods are all too familiar to Ha Deming. Years ago, he was a perpetrator of this destructive practice. But after numerous trips resulting in empty nets, he realized that if things continued this way, the fish in Dongting Lake would ultimately be wiped out. A Deming patrols Dongting Lake every day. Now instead of catching fish, he's on a mission to protect them. The decline of fish resources in Dongting Lake has been reversed thanks to the combined efforts of the government and local communities. The integration of river and lake ecosystems benefits all, and the lake is showing new signs of life. This research vessel is navigating the Yangtze River estuary. Experts from the East China Sea Fisheries Research Institute are visiting the area to monitor the local eel population. The Japanese eel spawns in the waters near Okinawa in the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean. Juveniles migrate through the Yangtze River estuary to mature in the freshwater of the Great River's middle and upper reaches. It's considered an international species due to its long-distance migratory nature. As a result, the issue of overfishing eels has garnered significant global attention. Zhuang Ping is the lead researcher for the National Eel Protection Action Plan. He's deeply concerned with the dire state of the eel population. 
，鳗鱼的人工繁殖是世界性难题，全世界都没有突破。同时，鳗鱼的养殖也是个巨大的产业，它的苗种百分之百的依赖天然资源，所以我们要保护鳗鱼资源，不然的话，我们这个产业也就没有了。Overfishing is a primary threat to fish species in the Yangtze River. Periodic fishing bans have been in use for many years, yet this has failed to halt the overall decline in the river's fish resources. It's become imperative that Fish populations in the Yangtze are given more space and time to recover. This could be the Yangtze River's last chance. Chao Wenxuan is a renowned ichthyologist and an academician in the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Over 60 years of research, he has witnessed a dramatic decline in fishery resources in the Yangtze River. His primary concern has long been striking a balance between economic development and conservation. This is the 鱿鱼都可以孵起来，孵起来干什么呢？孵起来做那个饲料，几毛钱一斤。呃，一串一串的都是这些小鱼些，资源破坏的很难。长江的水域生态，近些年确实已经发生了很大的变化。一个就是这个生态系统的服务功能降低，第二个就是这个水生生物多样性的降低。第三个就是一些珍稀特有的这个水生生物的濒危程度加剧，有的甚至于已经绝灭了。第四个就是渔业资源衰退。In 2006, Chao Wenxuan proposed a bold and unprecedented idea: a comprehensive fishing ban in the Yangtze River basin. To rescue and protect Asia's largest aquatic biodiversity reservoir and fundamentally restore the Yangtze's ecology. Life needs mutual respect, and the Yangtze River needed time to recover. A growing consensus was forming. Above and below the water, and along both riverbanks, a historic change was underway. The transformation from fisherman to ecological guardian involved a dramatic shift in lifestyle and livelihood. The scope of this change, covering such a vast area and large population, presented unprecedented challenges. A research team arrived on the banks of the Yangtze River to engage with the fishermen. These researchers were from the Strategic Research Center for Ecological Protection in the Yangtze River. The center was established by the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs Yangtze River Fisheries Administration in collaboration with Shanghai Ocean University. This research team had been conducting face-to-face -face interviews with fishermen, collecting extensive data to support the formulation of a comprehensive fishing ban in key areas of the Yangtze River Basin. The whole year I've been working, I have three experiences. The fish of the Yangtze River is a 
，渔民真苦，生态系统真危险。我们主要重点是放在二十多万渔民上岸后，他们的转转转业如何进行，他们的社会保障如何落实，他们的生活如何能够进一步的改善。那么我们找不到现成的经验，中国没有，国外也没有。长期以来靠山吃山，靠水吃水。这个现在突然之间，说把咱们这些渔民祖祖代代打鱼的，突然让人上岸了，对他们来讲带来很大的困境。所有的船网，我们是采取的回购的办法，把他的捕捞权收回来，船网。要补偿，就业帮扶一批，创业支持一批，社保兜底安保障安置一批，公益岗位安置一批，稳得住还不最终目标，要让我们农致富。Saving the Yangtze River was an urgent task. This effort was not just about restoring the river's natural balance. It was also about protecting the communities along its banks. The Qishui River, which winds over 500 kilometers through the provinces of Yunnan, Guizhou, and Sichuan, is a crucial habitat and breeding ground for rare and unique fish species in the Upper Yangtze River. It is often called the last refuge for the Yangtze aquatic life. It's early morning, and Yang Zhengxiong is busy preparing a grand breakfast for his fish. The farmer is known for using banana leaves as food for his fish. Yang Zhengxiang was among the last generation of fishermen on the Qishui River. On January 1, 2017, the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs rolled out a comprehensive fishing ban in the Qishui River basin. The Qishui River was the first primary tributary of the Yangtze to enforce a 10-year fishing ban. This saw more than 200 fishermen including Yang Zhengxiang, transition to other livelihoods. <laughs> Yang Zhengxiang began fishing when he was 20 years old. He grew up accustomed to the floating life. Yet after leaving that career behind, he has moved from the river to the mountains. With compensation from the buyback program and living subsidies, he built a pond in the mountains and started engaging in ecological fish farming. I'm now every day catching my fish. I'm happy. My family 就指望他，但是现在是越过越好，比以前大约你生活过得还圆满。The effects of the fishing ban were quickly apparent. According to a 2020 assessment by the Chinese Academy of Sciences Institute of Hydrobiology, in the four years following the introduction of the fishing ban. Fish resources in the Qishui River significantly recovered, and the level of ecological diversity improved.
Numbers of Yangtze Sturgeon and Chinese High Fin Banded Shark, two nationally protected fish species, also notably increased. The successful implementation of the Qishui River Fishing Ban has provided a valuable reference for the management of the entire Yangtze River Basin. The Yangtze River stretches for 45 kilometers through Mayanshan, a city in eastern China's Anhui province, which is where the river begins its northward journey. Liu Kai established a boat manufacturing factory here after giving up fishing. Mayanshan took the lead in initiating a fishing ban in key areas of the Yangtze River Basin on May 1, 2019. By supporting entrepreneurship, promoting recruitment and developing fallback positions, among other measures, the local authorities helped reassign fishermen, discover new opportunities, transition into new fields, and maintain stable livelihoods. President Xi Jinping paid a visit to Mayanshan on August 19, 2020. There, he reiterated the significance of the Yangtze River fishing ban and its effect on the livelihoods of more than 300,000 fishermen. He said, the cost of the fishing ban in the Yangtze River is not small, but it is worthwhile to protect the ecology of the whole basin. The aquatic biodiversity of the Yangtze River cannot be lost in the hands of our generation. On January 1, 2021, a 10-year fishing ban was officially put in place in several key areas of the Yangtze River Basin. Removing fishing boats from the Yangtze is not just good for the aquatic life. This is the largest fishing withdrawal effort in human history, hailed as a century-long project to protect the Yangtze River. It must succeed. Failure is not an option. Taizhou in Jiangsu province has the largest number of fishing boats and fishermen along the Yangtze's mainstream. The city has an extensive shoreline and numerous adjoining waterways, making enforcement of the fishing ban particularly challenging. Zhang Rongan leads a special team in patrolling the river. Zhu
former fishermen who once braved the winds and waves, now stand at the forefront once again, using their experience to combat poachers and remove illegal fishing nets. Through the efforts of various government departments and supporting policies, former fishermen have transitioned to a new identity and maintained their livelihoods. Today, they shine brightly, facing challenges head on. Following the large-scale fishing withdrawal, the price of wild fish from the Yangtze River has soared. Driven by the prospect of huge profits, poachers have become increasingly reckless. Joint law enforcement is crucial to implementation of the Yangtze River fishing ban. Multiple departments have deployed elite units to combat environmental crimes involving the river, sea, and land. This sort of justice is safeguarding myriad treasures beneath the waves of the Yangtze and the East China Sea. As fishermen come ashore and the river fish return home, the Yangtze River is experiencing a beautiful, unprecedented bloom. Lu Ku, an environmental volunteer in Changsha, Hunan Province, is leading children on a river experience activity. They Luku has been organizing such activities for years. He's led more than 12,000 primary and secondary school students on journeys to experience the magnificent landscapes and vitality of the Yangtze River. Luku has been concerned about the Yangtze for more than a decade. He conducts environmental research, helps monitor drinking water sources, and has formed teams of volunteers. In August 2017, he became a civilian river chief in Hunan. I in 2018, more than 300,000 river chiefs were appointed at the provincial, municipal, county and township levels nationwide, along with over 760,000 village river chiefs. 
From institutional construction to public participation, an increasing number of people are participating in the conservation of the Yangtze River. On March 1, 2021, after three rounds of deliberation, China enacted the Yangtze River Conservation Law. The 10-year fishing ban was codified into legislation, forming the strongest shield for the fish and ecosystem of the Yangtze. Three years have passed since the full implementation of the fishing ban. It's now at the most challenging and critical stage. In recent years, the ecological changes in the Yangtze River have been significant. Shu 我们将不断地优化完善长江水生生物监测调查的网络 丁柱向中华鲟、长江江豚、长江鲟这些珍稀濒危物种强化人工保种、科学增值放流。长江十年级鱼聚力生态、又立民生、更立长远，将在推进人与自然和谐共生的中国式现代化进程中发挥重要作
The pain humans have inflicted on this great river and the relentless efforts now being made for its restoration will become samples etched in history.